Welcome to the Phil Rosenberg Show. I am, of course, Phil Rosenberg, and I am here with Petit Selim. Uh, Selim, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm, I've been looking forward to doing an interview with you for quite some time, actually. I'm a, a fan of your work. You are a multimedia artist, right? So you don't, so you're a musician, and you, you play, I'm looking at you right now, you're surrounded by a thousand instruments, you play them all. Uh, you are an artist. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit of your art. I know you just, I can see you like almost move aside there to show me. You have something really cool and interesting right behind you. Yeah, yeah, look at that. We'll talk about that. You're an actress, right? And I guess you wouldn't differentiate between being a musician and being a singer, right? Those are the same? Yeah, to me it's the same. I'm just a master of, uh, of the vocal instrument. Okay, and what have I missed? What, what mediums do you work in that I have not mentioned? I mean, I do work also a little bit on the tech side of things. So I have um, this studio in, in which I reside, in which we do um, uh, vocal tracking, um, audiobooks, um, uh, dubbing, you know, that kind of thing. Because I also, I'm, I'm Franco-American, so right. I speak both French and, and English. So I, I do a lot of work in the studio, but you know. Okay, hold on, hold on a sec. How do you say the pandemic sucks in French? Uh, la pandémie est nulle. Okay, no, but you didn't say in French. Oh, well, yeah. No, you said it in French, but you didn't say the words in French, en français. No? Oh, comment est-ce qu'on dit en français la pandémie est nulle? Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Okay, I'm going to, throughout the interview, I'm just going to ask you to say things in French now and then, Perfect. if you don't mind. Okay, yeah. so... I want to I want to talk about with all the artists that I'm talking to, and I'm doing a series with of artists that have done stuff during the pandemic, and uh, I want to point to the advantage that anyone can have sure. by having a way to express yourself in this way, and how particularly I think in the pandemic, you can really have a different sort of experience if you allow yourself that. A, you know a form of expression it doesn't have to be good it doesn't have to be for public consumption it just has to be a way to release right now in your case it's really good right i mean the stuff that you do this is not just about okay I, you know i want to get rid of my stress during the day it's about people you're so good that a lot of people want to watch you and so let, and have been and so you were on tour before the pandemic struck so tell us about that right so um Amongst the many projects that I do, my main project is a fusion pop project. So basically, I'm I'm really influenced by um, music from around the world, different genres, different times, um, and uh, always with you know traditional instruments, um, but within a pop frame. And so that's kind of what I've been working on for the past two years, uh, mainly about three years almost. And this last, uh, yeah, just at the beginning of the year, I. Uh, had the amazing opportunity to tour five countries in Europe uh, within a uh, little under a month. Which, which countries were they? Uh, so it was um, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Belgium, France, Switzerland. Okay, nice. And, yeah. Yeah, it was That's really a lot bad. of cheese. I know you ate a lot of cheese on that tour. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mais, mais bien sûr, but of course. <laughs> Can you name... Could you, if you had to, could you name five cheeses, five different cheeses that you ate while you were traveling around? Uh, well, you know I had some Camembert, right. um, Gruyere, um, Brie. Um, what else did I have? Probably some Comte, Comte, and... Um, uh, did you have I mean, Swiss cheese in Switzerland? I actually don't think I had Swiss cheese, but I did have Emmental, so close enough, close enough. As you say, I've never had that, so I'm not sure what it is. But if you say it's similar, then I believe you. Um, okay, that's great. Wow, I'm really hungry now. Thank you for that. I know, me too. Yeah, wow. Okay, so I know what I'm having for dinner. Definitely some cheese. Maybe yeah. several kinds. Ooh, I have a Maybe great a little stuff. red wine, too. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, you're dangerous. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Okay. My night just became more interesting. So, so... That's what you were doing before the pandemic, and then everything, the world contracts, right? You're, you're in the entire world, and now you're, you go from that, 
literally being like feeling like you're just you're just letting it out belting to the entire world actually literally to being in how how big is your apartment how many square feet oh man well i live in brooklyn so right. you um, both do by the way we both do oh okay yeah yeah howdy neighbor um howdy. so you know basically you know a matchbox um yeah I mean, I'm lucky enough to have have the studio space, but yeah, I mean, I I couldn't tell you how many square feet, but you know, tiny, very. So the fifteen by fifteen would make it a large room in New York City, anywhere. Yeah, no, I don't. It's not fifteen by fifteen. It's right. uh, maybe like I want to say eight uh, by ten, you know, maybe. Okay, so the main point is though, you go from being out I mean, in the universe, yeah. and then suddenly you're you have to start existing inside, internally, instead of externally, because your yeah. external world has been shut down. Right? Well, you actually just touched upon something that I don't think I've really spoken to many people about, but has certainly been a big part of my emotional journey um, since this all started. Because, yeah, I mean, when this started, I came back a rock star. You know, I was um, at the um, height of my specifically musical career, um, and I was feeling on top of the world. You know, the world was my oyster. I had, you know, festivals. Um, and, and concerts lined up for the rest of the year that, of course, have all uh, fallen uh, off the wayside. But, um, you know, so it was, a, it was a real challenge and a blessing, I want to say, um, because I... And the challenge is easy to see. The challenge is, like, everything, set, everything stopped all of a sudden. Yeah. Right? A lot of people experience the same. I, I in that boat with you. What was the blessing? Well, uh, one, first of all, just immense gratitude that I even got to that point, like literally right before this all shut down, I had many musician friends of mine who um, had their tours planned for right after, and that, that had uh, completely, you know, all got, gotten canceled. So one, just, just gratitude that I was able to complete that. And then two, um, you know, grateful that it, just to be a creative, um, because it meant a couple of things. It meant there was never a dull moment. Ever since lockdown started, I have been working. I have been able to express. I have been able to do what I do best, which is make something out of literally nothing. And it's afforded me the time to be able to focus on that. So that's a perfect segue. Okay. Just before we go into, I want to hear, because you just did a song. And it, I've heard it, so I know what it sounds like, right? It sounds great. But I want everyone else to have a chance to hear it. Can you give us a version of it? And then after that song then the pandemic starts right yes yeah so Thanks i released uh reason and rhyme um uh in january right before the tour okay so let's hear that song and then we'll talk about what then what then what yeah sure. so this is definitely more of the um uh stripped down acoustic version both exist online but the um most recent version uh, Exists where online? Just, people can go get it where? Um, wherever they listen to music, so Spotify, Apple Music. But your um, website too, though, right? I'm, I'm trying to get you to plug that? your web. Plug your website. Go ahead and plug it. Oh, your yeah, of course. Um, Petitceline.com. Petitceline. And is that the, you can get everything of yours there or no? Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Because that's where I'm heading right after this interview. So go ahead. Gonna go to your website and eat cheese. Yes, and a little wine. You have to, otherwise you're you're getting kicked off. <laughs> All right, let's hear some tune. Celine, that sounds great. I'm gonna get you to play right there because I want you to play a little bit louder. Just to, just belt it. Go ahead. Feel free. Oh. Let, it, let it go. Well, I'll go to the chorus then. We'll rain again. We'll rain again. Won't we? Won't we, my dear? Someday 
little shortened version, but I don't know how much of that you were That was great. To... That was really great. Yeah. I'm sorry that I, I thought the very beginning, maybe the microphone wasn't picking it up well enough. So I'm sorry to have interrupted, but it sounded, the whole thing sounded great, but I wanted to let you know that you could yeah. really go hard into it and that would be fine for, I think, the mic. It came out, I know it's going to come out really well. You, that was wonderful. Thank that was you. wonderful, yeah. Celine. Yeah. A little okay. shortened version, but you can go and listen to the whole thing uh, online. Um, actually, interestingly enough, the uh, the the newer single, um, so the most recent production of it, um, not many people know this, mm -hmm. but um, it not only incorporates a sitar and a pinne, I think it's called. It's a Burmese oboe, um, but it actually um, the percussive sounds are composed of about uh, eight different bird calls. Um, so what is perceived as percussion or, um, you know, uh, drums in the background are actually birds. Got it. So let me, so then the pandemic hits. Yes. Right? Segway. And boom, uh, life changes for everybody. And you, instead, I keep, you know, artists have the opportunity to expand, where a lot of people, I think, during the pandemic, during the quarantine, just allowed the physical realm to dictate their internal existence as well. So this is one of the really nice things about artists. What did you do to expand internally as your physical world contracted? Um, that's a great question. And I, I, um, I hope that it's, it's, um, that's a journey that many of us are choosing to take right now. Um, I know that for me, I, felt it was an opportunity to deepen my understanding and my practice in um, a lot of um, sound healing work that I've been doing for at least the past year. Um, wait, wait, this, wait, whoop, 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 sound healing, sound healing, alert, alert. Yes. So is it just what it sounds like, basically? Just you listen to something and your arm is no longer broken? or tell, I mean, people need to know what that is, right? Let's not make assumptions. Uh, what is that? Right, so there are um, several applications. Um, uh, one of the main ones that I've been doing on a, on a mass level is um, like sound journeying or sound meditations. So I've been okay. on, on Twitch, which is a live broadcasting um, uh, platform. Um, and every Wednesday I give a sound meditation. What time on Wednesday? What time? Uh, it's uh, normally at nine, although this week and next at 10. Sorry, nine in the morning or nine in the evening? PM, thank you for clarifying. Um, so 9 p.m. on Twitch, later. and how, do, how can people pick up that stream, by the way? So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's at uh, petite underscore Celine. I'm sure if you just look up petite Celine, P-E-T-I-T-E-C-E-L-I-N-E, -E -E, that uh, it'll, it'll come up. Um, but yeah, so, so uh, you know, sound meditation is one way to go about that. Um, another thing that I was doing not so much since the pandemic started because that did require a more um, physical approach was actual, um, yeah, kind of what you're talking about, sound healing. Now I would never claim that I could heal a bone. However, there are certain frequencies that do promote bone growth. So, um, it's like actually, a certain number of megahertz. So as a radio person, yes, you're, you're, you're trained to think in terms of megahertz, right? So we're so. talking about 20 to 50 hertz is, um, is about the frequency that, and, and interestingly enough, that's about the frequency of a cat's purr. So it's a, it's a misconception that the cat purrs when it is happy. It's actually about uh, being comfortable. So you'll find if a cat falls from a tree, It'll purr. It's not because it's happy about it, but it's because it's self-generating, it's self-healing, it's trying to. Which, which leads me perfectly into the next thought I have, which is you are known pretty widely. Is it as the cat woman, or the little cat woman? What is it? <laughs> um, at least in Brooklyn, at least on my blog, yeah. I, uh, is it I just the cat woman, or you just are a, a cat woman? Or you I am the... a cat lady, but I am the cat, cat lady. lady who walks her cat around Brooklyn, so. Uh, <laughs> That's on a leash? <laughs> yes, on a leash. She's perfectly really? leashed. Right? And what does she do when she comes across a dog? Uh, she'll usually hop on my shoulder or um, she will go after the dog. She is 
fearless. Her name is Halsey, and I call her Ballsy Halsey because <laughs> there is nothing that, I mean, she has scared several dogs. I don't um, doubt it. Yeah. I don't doubt it. Cats can be pretty intimidating if they're not themselves. You know, it's funny, just as in the world of human beings, it's a lot less about how big you are and a lot more about uh, the sense that someone has of you, whether you're willing to go for real the distance, right? You don't want to fight with someone that is going to just not stop until there's nothing, you know, until they're dead or something, right? I mean, it's... Absolutely. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so cats... Well, that's part of... That's a part of, um, I mean, it's one aspect of, of the sound meditations, right? So on, on the um, on the giving side, right? Because I felt like this was truly an opera. I just felt like, um, you know, what can I do? What can I offer during this time? And it felt like figuring out a way to do a digital, which is something I'd never done. It was only ever in a room, you know, with a, a circle of people around me. So to figure out how to do that digitally was its obstacle in and of itself. But that's kind of the idea is like, you know, um, sound, um, especially simplified sounds can really um, encourage an inward journey and a sort of mind over matter mentality, um, which I think does encourage uh, creation and, and, uh, and healing. And, uh, and yeah, so it's been really interesting to study not only how sound, sound affects the um, psychology, but uh, physio physiology, as we were just discussing. Well, those things are not disconnected. Let's say that when your emotional slash psychological self has a discomfort, your physical self will often reflect that. And Absolutely. it can work the other way as well. So I think there's a definite connection. And uh, and and so it's a way to heal that comes from that perspective, I think is very valuable and easy. Here's the thing, easy and inexpensive to access and something that feels good as opposed to, right? So most people, when they think about what makes you better, it's like, oh, I need to get a shot or like a cast on my arm or some nasty tasting medication, right? Or you know, exercise, which is difficult, right? You know, running can be you, where you're just exerting yourself. So, so here's something that you're presenting as healing and helpful that you can actually derive substantial pleasure from. How about that? Yeah. And so, it's more or less accessible, you know? I mean, whatever that is to you. I mean, music therapy is different from, from um, sound healing or sound meditation, all within what I would described as the same umbrella, but you are talking about different ways of accessing the brain um, and, and also the body. How interesting. Okay, let's talk about the future. Yes. It's hard to figure out what the future holds right now, right? I think we all, the world, when I say we all, I think the world lived under it took so many things for granted and lived with so many assumptions about what tomorrow would look like based on what yesterday looked like. Yeah. And now we see none of those assumptions or many of those assumptions are no longer well and easily founded. And so it's not necessarily easy to look at yesterday and say, okay, well, tomorrow is likely to be some sort of reflection of that. So what do you anticipate for your world? post pandemic what uh, let me actually let me make this a little bit more fun what's the first when when all the restaurants are open and you can get any kind of food and drink you want what's the first place you're going to go eat what's the, or the first type of food you're going to have and the first beverage i think it's going to be a glass of wine but maybe i'm wrong uh that you're going to have um i would like to go on a trip i want to go trip. to peru <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to Peru for dinner yeah. and have and a glass of wine. Nice. Yeah. Like okay. Yes, absolutely. And uh, and and maybe pick up some more um do some more music catching, you know. Um not unlike dream catching. But uh uh So that's what you, you know, want to do post pandemic. You want to travel to Peru specifically. You have Or some... I mean anywhere. I'm I'm open, but yeah. Okay, so you want to get out of New York in particular. Uh, yeah, once that's possible and once that's uh, reasonable to do, I, I think I, I would like to do that. Here's the thing. 
my 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 plans prior to all of this i was scheduling a northern tour i was already scheduling a a tour from amsterdam to marrakesh uh next year um all of these things are are probably no no longer going to happen um so what i've been focusing on has been a lot of music writing um and specifically how to incorporate how to marry all of these worlds right um, so how does the sound healing and the sound, uh, journeying fit into my next pop album? You know, is there a way to make this work accessible? Is there a way to make it so that someone who's just having a grand old time on the dance floor is actually getting a spiritual, uh, or, or, or healing, um, benefit without even knowing it, without even knowing that that's what they signed up for. Got um, it. Yeah. So that's really taking the focus on um, my creativity right now. And, and so what does that next album sound like? And I think I'm not alone. I think a lot of um, musical creators are um, taking this as an opportunity to write a lot and, uh, and, and to think about how this time is going to shape what comes next. And, and I think if you're doing it um, mindfully, you're thinking about how it can uh, be of service to to others. Okay, so what specific food do you miss the most that the pandemic has kept you from? <laughs> um, what specific food? You miss anything I... terribly, like cheesecake or I don't know what. You know, I'm empanadas. Of course, I have some of my favorite restaurants that I really just miss going to. Um, you know, I have this whole. Give list. them a shout. Give them a shout out. Oh Whatever. yeah. I mean, like the garage. I mean, because I'm French, and I'm just gonna go ahead and. I know where that is. Sure, I've been. Oh, there. you've have you been to the garage? I live in Brooklyn, baby. All right, yeah. so you know, you know, they're good, man. What else? I I miss them. Um, you know, and then I have some some restaurants that have closed down, like the Guadalupe Inn, that I really I'm so sad about that. I've never been there. Yeah, they're great. They're right off the Morgan stop, off the L. Um, really wonderful, and the last I checked, it appeared they closed. I hope that is wrong. I hope that is misinformation, um, because they they were great, and they were a great event space as well. Not only that, but that's a lot of a lot of the event spaces I would love to go back to. So like the House of Yes, Elsewhere, um, you know, uh, Jupiter Disco. A bunch of these places are just some of my favorite. You know, uh, Brooklyn Mirage. I mean, some of my favorite venues and, and dance clubs. Um, I don't party often, but when I do, you know, there's like face paint and glitter and, you know, it's usually I'm taking the next two days off. <laughs> you sound like that commercial. I don't know if you know. I don't party often, but when I do, face glitter is involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. That's this gal, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Okay. And who's the first person you want to see when the quarantine's over, when the lockdown's over? Um, my mom and my uh, dad. Where are yeah. they? Where are they? they are um they live in New Jersey now. Um they're not far out, um, but they um, you know, we and we've been talking every day and whatnot, uh, but I usually because they are so close, I No, but hugs are important though. Hugs are really important. And no I'm amount sure. of cyber hugging icons or emojis or like little huggy things on the whatever, none of that I, none of that shit replaces an actual hug. I, I feel that absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Dad and I, I would love to see my dear, dear friend Emily, who lives in Austin. Um, she was supposed to have a wedding. Uh, she, of course, all things got a. Uh, I have a great idea for a present for her, though. What's that? Why don't you do a cover of "For Emily Wherever I May Find Her," which is an old Simon and Garfunkel tune. Oh, yes, wonderful. I actually, I am doing a cover, but she wants me to do um, Can't Help Falling in Love. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, so. Um, but maybe you just send like that, that one oh, little thing, yeah. like just on in a little, you know, quick, like a little quick jam for her. Let her know how much you love her, right? It's still not as good as a hug, but you know something? Things idea. like that will make, hugs don't usually make people cry. Something like that, you're guaranteed to make her cry. Guaranteed. This is very true. And you always want to make your close friends cry, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they say hugs release oxytocin. A little do they know the power of sound. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I used to be, by the way, I used to be involved with a clinic 
in Montana, in Billings, Montana, who or which did a bunch of uh, music healing through percussive uh, instrument. And it basically it connected in the same way. It was, it was all these different ways of getting to a, a meditative state. That's basically what it was. So, um, and you can access that through writing, through music playing, through painting, through in the most simple, through just listening to music, through yoga, through Absolutely. running, through, you know, any, I mean, I don't know, what is the, I've never tried to pinpoint what the, you know, what is it that's happening? There's some release of, of the moment you're in, like, like you're the reality that surrounds you and an exploration of something else. It's hard to describe what that is. How would you describe that thing? What, what, do you know what I'm saying? I think so. I mean, you know, I, it's not just music, but I know that I can speak to that m most strongly or, or like, um, for example, you know, I went to school for acting and I actually started my whole career with acting. And so a lot of those group uh, exercises very much were, were examples of this, but, um, you know, entrainment or, you know, body, body toning is, is what we call it in, in, in sound uh, healing. Um, but you're basically getting with entrainment, you're matching and you are manipulating certain parts of the body. So like with the drum, you can um, reduce someone's uh, heart rate by first matching their heart rate rate and then slowly bringing it down with the drum. And as you do this, you can actually watch their heart rate drop as, as well. How interesting. Yeah. How very interesting. Okay, so we've actually gone over the time limit by, we've actually doubled the allotment of time. These were oh, going to no. originally be, no, but that's okay. That means that you're, I, you're, it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> can you do, by the way, can you do your best Pepe Le Pew? Um, can, can you do one? Do you know? Well, I, I, uh, I know he's uh, a guy. I mean, no, 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 of course I know Pepe Le Pew, but all I remember now is just. <laughs> That's good enough, perfect. Right, that's all I was looking for. I just wanted a couple of kisses, really. That was my way of making that happen. All right, thank you so much, Shalene, for joining me. It has really been a pleasure. And uh, when the pandemic is done, we're gonna catch up with you and see where you're going, what the next step is, how can the world reconnect with your art or connect, you know, stay connected with your art, I suppose, is the better way. Uh, Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was really such a pleasure, and I'm glad to see that you're making the most of this situation and extending, extending it to us as well. Trying, trying so hard. Okay, have a wonderful, wonderful week and weekend. You as well. Au revoir. Au revoir.